Okay, I'm your host, James Way, and this is Northwest Liberty News. Thanks so much for joining me today. Let me kick off. Let's bring my uh, my fabulous guest in here. He's, as I said, he's a friend of mine. He used to be a broadcast partner, uh, used to be a broadcast partner of mine, and he is uh, probably, I think, in America anyway, in this country. He, uh, although he doesn't live in this country now, but um, in this country, he's probably one of the experts, certainly, in space weather and um, and the Grand Solar Minimum. His uh, his his uh, website. Uh, his uh, YouTube channel, Adapt 2030, is very popular, and I've been a guest on his program. He's been a guest on mine numerous times, and uh, he's uh, so knowledgeable about what's going on, and he really has his uh, finger on the pulse, and we have um, you know, mutual friends that we've interviewed, and it's all good. It's all good when you're, when you're talking about my next guest, David Debine, who is, uh, who's gracious enough to join me here today. David, thanks so much for joining me here on Northwest Liberty News, my friend. Good to see you again. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm absorbing information newly every single day myself. You know, it's a continuous learning process for me. And, uh, yeah, we had some great conversations in the day. And when we did our original broadcast a couple of years ago, you know, what we talked about then is actually transforming right in front of our eyes to be real. Well, we talked about these changes to expect in the grand solar minimum. I can't believe they're coming to fruition already. You know, we weren't expecting these types of massive changes, crop losses, massive floods and everything to be really churning until about 2021. So it looks like it's uh, about two years ahead of schedule, which means for me, it's a more powerful cycle on top of uh, the 400-year regular grand solar minimum. Well, David, knowing what I know about what we've talked about before, that's not good news. That's <laughs> not good news for uh, us here that this is a more powerful cycle than you even anticipated before. Because the cycle that you were talking about before didn't sound like it was going to be a very fun time, to say the least, to try to live through. Now, if it's going to be even worse than before, David, uh, now on top of we talked on the pre on the pre uh the pre-show, as we were as we were chatting before the before the broadcast, you know this um, this flooding that's going on in the Midwest now is uh, some could say borderline catastrophic. On top of the changing weather patterns and the the uh, the, the reduced solar activity, we could really be facing a serious food food crisis here coming up in the next uh, oh I don't know next uh, eighteen months or less. What next year? What are you calling, David? Even sooner than that, right? Yeah, I'm going to step far over the line and call it catastrophic and borderline never been seen before. So I'm going to step way over that line and get directly into the, uh, the mix there. You have to realize we get to go back to 1938 to find anything equivalent with the minimal amount of crop planting that we have this year, and then it's 10 million acres less than were planted in 1938. Yeah, that's right, 38. How far back in time do we need to go and how many people were on the planet at that time? I wanted to touch briefly on China. You know, I'm over here in Taiwan. Our times are a little bit different. 5 a.m. start time for me. But picking up on the news last night before I uh, decided to take a few hours of sleep, the army worm infestation in China is unstoppable at the moment. I mean, it is running unchecked, truly unchecked. They don't have the uh, pesticides over there to contain this army worm outbreak. Even if they were to implement a full program, they're still going to have to train up the farmers on how to do it. And that's going to be, a, I guess, a step back in time as this thing's progressing. It is sweeping through the country. And it's coming into the prime warmer months. This thing can spread really well. Uh, there's a lot of air currents spreading this, as well as birds and other things picking up these worms and moving them along. It is going, it, so far, it's been a 30% loss in China. Now, you have to understand that in the world's corn producers, China is number two behind the United States. And then we come into Brazil and other places like this. Brazil's going to have record production this year, but they're going to only eclipse last year's production by 100,000 tons. That's it. We're talking about losing millions and millions of tons from United States production. And there's already talk about... Uh, rationing for ethanol production in the United States due to the lack of corn going to be grown in the U.S. And it's just quirky how all these trade wars are starting when we're going to be pulling back on our exports. China's going to be searching the planet for new corn. 
this is not a conspiracy theory, right? This is, this is science. And I just want to say here, if you're listening, and you being a YouTube producer, you're, of course, an original content producer on YouTube. I'm sure, like me, there, you know, you, you create, um, you know, you create um, uh, um, content, but you also watch content as well. There's probably people that you follow because we, of course, don't have time to study everything. That's why we rely, rely on, hopefully, other good, honest YouTubers to be able to uh, give us some information. Yeah, I want to give you one quickie. Uh, Feeder Flash, Corbett Wall's site, Feeder Flash. You need to check this out. Daily updates on the hogs, uh, the cattle markets, as well as he goes into some of the crop losses, hands on the ground, boots in the ground, boots in the mud kind of reports. Really good. It's the best on the net. Corbett, shout out. Anyway, that's a, one of my best resources to go to. But anyway, this is the most interesting thing. All what they talked about with military uh, rapid response force around Europe needs to be integrated by 2023. They're building a whole new highway system similar to America to have a, a rapid force move from country to country across the continent. But that all needs to be completed by 2023. The rollout of 5G across Europe and in the UK needs to be yeah. done by 2023. And here we are with the greatest crop losses in the first step down into what's going to be considered a global food insecurity with rising prices to the Uber that's going to set off social unrest 2023. Now, that alone was like, whoa, look at all those dates matching up around 2023. But here's the kicker for me. The EU Unified Defense Force is going to go occupy North Africa under something called the EU Neighborhood Friend Policy. And where are they going to occupy? The same exact areas that the Romans had for their grain growing regions in the Roman period 2,000 years ago. And now I've done an enormous amount of research recently on the amount of rainfall across the Middle East and North Africa. And it's definitely getting wetter across the Sahel, North Africa, and the Middle East. So this looks like at least a 2,000-year repeat in cycle, and I've stretched it out to even look around 6,000-year mid-Holocene. So this rain repeating right now fits 100% between a 2,000-year or a 6,000-year cycle repeat. So if the EU is going to go down there and start grabbing old Roman grain-growing areas, and they could use the primary water source from Libya, because Deborah Tavares and I spoke about that, Using the primary water source from Libya, the increased rainfalls from above, and if they could build out a huge canal system and irrigation, they could, get this, this is going to floor you, the projections they have, they could produce more grain in northern Africa if they utilize the water resources correctly than in all of North America. You know how many chess, you have years that took in advance for them to do that? Somebody knew these cycles were coming that's going to devastate our society. Decades decades in advance was that many chess pieces to be moved around the board that slowly they knew this thing was coming since the 70s this is how deep it goes and when you say governments do they understand of course they do everything's about continuity of government at the moment and again as it was explained to me continuity of government is fully underway but they don't want you competing with the same resources so if there's seven billion people out there competing for the same machinery, repair parts, long-term food storage, seeds, medicines, and whatever else there might be, governments are not warning people on purpose because they don't want you competing for what they're buying at the moment. Because if 7 billion people ran in the same supply chain, wanted the same exact products, all at the same time, it would lock up. There'd be no way to supply everything. Premature fights in stores. People would be withdrawing their money out of the banks and the fractionalized reserve system would collapse before. So they're going to run this thing at 2,000 miles an hour straight into a brick wall and leave everybody unprepared. But of course the governments will be prepared. And that is so inconvenient to talk about. Take all these seemingly disconnected pieces and weaving a greater puzzle. And it seems to be so true. And then you look over, and I'm going to ramble for a second, because when you look at the Ukraine, that's all about grabbing a grain zone. When you look at Kazakhstan, that's all about securing more grain growing areas for China and, and Russia to split up. Everywhere you look around the planet, it's not about the money anymore. It's not about the fuel anymore. It's about the prospective grain growing areas that are going to come online when the rest of northern parts of our climates go offline. And everybody's posturing because food is going to be way more valuable than energy will be. And money, 
they're going to manipulate the markets the best they can to not trigger anybody to understand about the food losses at our doorstep because the money for them is meaningless. It's about the power and control now. So the manipulation in the futures market and food prices, etc., it's to not signal you that there's a big problem with the food production. They're going to run it into the ground at a thousand miles an hour and nobody's going to, it's going to hit us and you're going to ask, what just happened?